I made a suite of Macs for live devices called MIDI Sample and Hold. Over the past two years, they've become a staple of my workflow for creating with live and sensory percussion, particularly in regard to handling pitch information. If you aren't well acquainted with sample and hold, it can be a bit tricky to wrap your mind around. So in this video, we'll start with some sample and hold 101 nerd out, going through the few adjustments to using the technique that led to me making MIDI sample and hold. From there, we'll get into how to set the devices up and use them with sensory percussion, so feel free to skip around. Sample and hold is usually implemented in a device to get random held values, and that is achieved by literally sampling a random signal, such as noise. Let's say that's just a really zoomed in view of white noise or something. If I was to sample that here, that value would be just below the zero point. And if I was to sample it here, that value is kind of midway above. Let's sample here, zero, just below zero. That is super high. This result of sampling the randomness is these held values that are held until we sample a new value. For example, on the Moog Matriarch, there's a modulation bus, and one of the waveforms is fluctuating random voltage. So if I just go ahead and get this synth droning, we can listen to that fluctuating random output. And it's kind of just sliding all over the place. If we wanted that pitch to jump to the new value instead of sliding around, we can use the sample and hold output instead which is just going to sample the randomness with every clock. We aren't limited to only sampling at regular intervals. We could also just manually decide when to sample. So in this super simple patch, I patched that same waveform output with the continuous fluctuating voltage into a separate sample and hold circuit. And then I patched the gate output from the keyboard into that sample and hold. So every time I hit a note, that's when it'll sample the random values. make this even more musical by replacing the random as the sampling source with something more tuned, such as an ascending scale. This is just the sequence running straight into the oscillator, but if I send the source sequence to be sampled into a sample and hold circuit, and then trigger that from the keyboard, I can choose when I want the pitch to update. But it makes some musical sense. I've grown to love this technique of using sample and hold to process a melodic signal. I am able to arrange my composition with some predictability, but still be flexible in how I perform it based on when I choose to sample it. I really wanted to use this technique in software, so that's why I made MIDI sample and hold. If you have a licensed copy of Live Suite, you can use these MIDI sample and hold Max for Live devices. You can download them for free from my website. And let's just do a really basic setup to utilize these with sensory percussion. Very simple template, sensor input, sensory percussion plugin, and then these are tracks receiving MIDI from my kick and snare. I've made this very simple sequence, and I set it to no out no MIDI output because I intend to throw it into MIDI sample and hold world. All you do is put this pitch out device on the track that contains the source MIDI that you intend to sample. Select a channel, one, two, or three, on a track that is receiving MIDI from sensory percussion. You can see that I'm sending out C2 here. Let's put an instrument on here. Then I can put one of these three pitch in devices on this chain to intercept the MIDI information. We'll just start with chord. And this is a MIDI device, so it goes before the instrument. The main controls are selecting the appropriate channel so that it matches the source. We selected channel one, so let's go ahead and make sure one is selected here. 
and then establish the note duration because what's happening is we're creating new MIDI information and I find it helpful to be able to just set the length of the note here instead of having to toggle back and forth between the plugin. So now we can just run our sequence. Every time we hit the drum, we sample whatever current MIDI information is active in our source. I can play one note several times or skip notes. Some people might be kind of bothered that this is sort of pre-planned. I've even heard people describe it as kind of like playing Guitar Hero, <laughs> and that's totally fine. I think that's sort of funny. Even if it is a Guitar Hero workflow, I feel really good about it because I'm able to leverage this to be expressive in ways that I care about. Each three of the pitch in devices are useful for handling polyphony in different ways. Since we're already using the chord device, uh, we can start there. It's fairly self-explanatory. It will play any active MIDI notes. You can see on the keyboard what MIDI notes are happening. Since this can get kind of confusing since we're actually just triggering all of this with C2 from sensory percussion. If you wanted to restrict what MIDI notes this is allowed to let pass through, you can just draw a box. It's kind of useful if the instrument is only appropriate for a certain range. Cycle is very similar to the cycle mode in the sensory percussion sampler, except we're arpeggiating through any active MIDI notes. So if we go ahead and run this again, change the direction up down or up down and then you can reset it which is useful if you have very dense chords that you would want to jump to the first note of last but not least is the voice select as the name implies when encountering more than one active MIDI note at a time it will select the voice that you have selected here I mainly made this device to pick out the first note uh, for playing a bass line, for instance. So let's go ahead and grab a bass appropriate instrument. Since this is a bass synthesizer, it is probable that we would prefer to only sample the lowest note, which is often the root, but not always. Let's go ahead and see what that sounds like. If we wanted to sample a different voice, we could just move this slider. And the top voice. What I'm going to do is go ahead and copy this whole chain onto my kick. So now I'm triggering the lowest note in the chord with my kick. And then with my snare, I'm going to bring back that chord to play string pits chords. So we can use the same source for two different rules, determining the bass by selecting the lowest voice on our kick and for playing string chords via the pitch in chord device. Yeah, 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 yeah. 